Traffic into Canada from the U.S. isn't back to full steam yet after being shut down for much of the pandemic. But for one hitchhiker, the trucks and other vehicles that are crossing may be enough to get a foothold that puts Ontario's wine country in harm's way. With us to explain why the spotted lantern flaw is cause for concern, in Hamilton, Ontario, Justin Chandler, Ontario Hubs journalist covering the Hamilton-Niagara region. Hey, Justin. Hey, Ann. All right, so for a lot of people, this is probably the first time that they've heard of the spotted lantern fly. What is it? So this is a, an interesting looking insect. It's, it, it's technically a plant hopper. It's called a lantern fly and it kind of looks like a moth, but when it's fully grown, it's this uh, about three centimeter long, um, bright red bug with, uh, with wide wings. Um, it kind of looks like a Pokemon, I think, a little bit cartoonish. Um, and it, it's an invasive species that's taken a big hold throughout the United States. Now, I got to say, they do look pretty and, uh, dare I say, even cute. Um, but there is a lot of concern. Tell us why is why are, you know, farmers in Ontario and experts in the area concerned about them coming to the area? Well, I'll just say first, I think they look a little bit scary, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> anyway, um, so why people are concerned is essentially this invasive species uh, was first noticed in America in Pennsylvania in 2014. It's thought to have come over in a shipment, maybe from China, where the species is native. And being as it's an invasive species, it doesn't have any natural predators here. Uh, and it eats things that it shouldn't be for our ecosystem. So it really likes this one invasive tree called the tree of heaven. And it also really likes grapes. So that's been a problem in eastern United States and moving up close to Niagara. So there's worries here because Niagara grows a lot of grapes. So, Justin, you had mentioned growers in the Niagara region are obviously concerned. It's obviously one of the biggest employers in the region. Uh, what's the concern when we talk about the actual grapes themselves? Right. So what I what I learned from the, the Ministry of Agriculture from Hannah Fraser, who's an entomologist there, is that grapes are something like a four billion dollar business in Ontario. And so the worry with these with these bugs is that they can really eat a lot of grapes and they can actually kill the vines. Uh, what Mandy Ennis from the Invasive Species Center said is that wineries can essentially be nuked. That was the word that she used. And she said that in Pennsylvania, for example, it's just acres and acres of grapevine have been destroyed. So it would mean a winery, if they have an infestation, would either have to just risk losing everything or they'd have to really ramp up their pesticides use, which might be something that they don't want to do. Um, you did touch a little bit about uh, when it first was discovered here in the States. How does the species sort of work its way um, through the borders? So this species is uh, often called like a hitchhiker. So the way that it's been getting around and actually getting through um, quarantine zones, even in the United States, um, is because it lays eggs that are very hard to find. It, it's a pretty mobile insect, so it, it can jump around. But often what happens is after they lay their eggs, they die. So they're, they're being spread often by their eggs. So they're just really hard to find. So they might lay their eggs on vehicles. They might lay them on a shipment of stone that's coming somewhere. And there's something that people could easily miss and then unwittingly transport along with them into a new area. All right, I do have a graphic um, and it shows the life cycle of the insect. Can you kind of walk us through what we're looking at here? Yes. So egg laying starts in September or December. So that's coming up soon. And then they stay as egg masses for quite a while. And as you can see, those egg masses are pretty hard to detect. They actually change color uh, over time. And they look a lot like mud when they're laid on something. So something you could easily miss. Then in the spring, they hatch and they're that uh, little black and white bug in a nymph stage. And then as they get a little bit older, come into July to September, you can see them with that uh, red color. And then they grow into that sort of um, very noticeable uh, wider wings uh, with that red coloring. Now, looking at uh, that graphic, we can see that we're kind of in that fourth and star to when uh, the wings come out. Um, there is some cause for concern. We're sort of in a perfect storm, shall we say, with uh, where we are in their cycle and uh, with the borders reopening because of the pandemic. Again, the borders opened earlier this month. Uh, what's the concern there? So I've been speaking with uh, several different invasive species experts for uh, the piece that I did uh, to try to really get a sense. And there's a worry right now. I spoke to, for example, Mandy Ennis at the Invasive Species Center, uh, which is an Ontario body up in Sault Ste. Marie. And she said that one of the concerns right now is that 
with the border open again to non-essential travel from the U.S. is that there's just even more avenues for the insect to come in. So travelers are already worrying about doing a COVID-19 screening, waiting in long lines to get into, let's say, Niagara because they want to go to the falls, they want to do a wine tour. So there's the possibility now that an unwitting traveler could also be bringing a lanternfly, maybe on the bottom of their vehicle that they just think is a mud splotch. Um, so it's not that they couldn't have come in before because obviously insects don't respect borders, but uh, now that there's more avenues again. So it's just a, an even bigger risk and even more possibility than we had. So what are we hearing from government and uh, growers in the area to combat the issue? Well, they're all actually working together on this. One thing that they've been saying uh, consistently to me in my piece was that public awareness is really important right now. So an example of uh, one of those collaborations and a public awareness campaign would be that the Canadian Food Inspection Agency and the Invasive Species Centre have teamed up to make uh, material available so that people can learn more about the lanternfly with, uh, with fact sheets. Another one is that the grape growers of Ontario teamed up with the Canadian Food Inspection Agency and the Ministry of, on of Agriculture in Ontario um, to actually put out something like 65 of these different lanternfly traps among transportation corridors. And the idea with those is that if the lanternfly gets in, they could try and catch some. But it's also just so that people will see them and then think, oh, what's that? And notice and look up. And then there's some information about uh, the lanternfly on those different traps. Now, uh, when I was looking up spotted lanternfly, I did see some video that uh, you mentioned in your article um, of Temple University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where they are just kind of swarming one campus building and lots of people stomping on them. Uh, is that kind of the way that we should be dealing with it? Or what should people be doing if they notice these flies? Well, I don't know that you shouldn't be stomping on lanternflies, <laughs> um, but definitely the, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, I spoke to one of the specialists there, Christine Viegas, and she said that uh, you should be reporting information uh, to them. So people in Ontario could report to this mapping project that's in the province, but also the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, just anybody can report an insect and then they can come and do an investigation and determine what needs to happen. And there are links for how to do that in my piece. Great stuff. Thanks so much, Justin. Really appreciate it. Thank you. The Agenda in the Summer with Nam Kiwanuka is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.